Welcome to the Audio Inc. Radio Podcast, featuring interviews with the biggest names in rock and metal. Hosted by Ann Erickson. Get inked. Visit Facebook.com slash Audio Inc. Radio, Twitter.com slash Audio Inc. Radio, and Audio Inc. Radio.com for more ink. Phew, that's a lot of ink. It's Audio Inc. Radio.com. You know it. It's Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. Radio, and you know that I'm a metal girl. I love my metal music for whatever reason. I just love metal music. And I mean, I like a lot of different rock, metal, alternative. Just if it rocks, I like it. You know, I'm a fan of post grunge. It's kind of the stuff that I first got into when I was in radio and first got into music and stuff. Post grunge, new metal, alternative. I love the 80s hair metal, quote unquote, which I know some people don't like to call it hair metal, but 80s hard rock and heavy metal, that sunset strip sound. And I love metal. I love heavy metal, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Slayer. I mean, all that stuff, it just speaks to me for whatever reason. I mean, I think it's probably because my family and I have joked that they took me to see all these big Broadway musicals when I was a kid and Phantom of the Opera was one of them in that musical of course much of it is in the minor key because Andrew Lloyd Webber when he wrote it all of the Phantom's music when the Phantom came on and would sing it would all be in the minor key which I think is really cool because it gave the Phantom that sinister character that menacing kind of creepy character and some of Christine's stuff was in a major key, so it would be kind of a juxta position or whatnot. But we joke that sometimes, maybe because I was into Phantom of the Opera when I was a kid, I just was drawn to kind of creepy metal music. Who knows? But I am glad that I am because metal music, I mean, there is no denying the instrumentation. You could put up a guitarist in a metal band against any other genre and that guitarist would probably come out on top because metal is known for their just amazing instrumentation and metal music is I love to champion it champion it did I say that right I have no idea but I'm gonna keep it in I'm not gonna edit that out because this is the real me but I love to bring metal artist on the show and to kind of be a mouthpiece to help get out news about metal acts and I like to book all kinds of different artists for the audio ink radio podcast because I like to just cover a range and I think it's cool because you're always going to learn something new even if it's not your favorite band or musical genre you're always going to learn something new so you've got everyone on here from Rob Halford from Judas Priest to Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam which Those are two very different bands, but I, for one, had such a great time interviewing both of those people, both of those legendary musicians, and I learned something new from both of those chats. I mean, with Stone, it was really cool to talk about the genesis of the Seattle scene because he was at the forefront. I mean, he was there the very early days before grunge was even a term what is that grunge? No one even had heard of it. And so it was really cool to talk with him. And then, of course, Rob Halford of Judas Priest, it was great to delve into his life and his career. And you can check out both of those interviews right now on the podcast. Just kind of, you have to scroll down on the page and you will find those interviews. So check that out. But one metal band that blew me away live I could not believe it. I mean, they were incredible live is Anthrax. Backstory, I'd always wanted to see Anthrax live, but for whatever reason, it just never worked out. The stars never aligned. And then Slayer did their big farewell tour. If you remember, they always, they had kind of a few different lineups for different legs of the tour, but the lineup, the leg that I went on was amazing. It was Slayer with Testament, Lamb of God, Anthrax, and a few more bands that I can't quite remember, but they were all very 
very heavy bands and I covered the tour for Audio Inc. Radio. I did photos and stuff like that in Grand Rapids, actually. Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Van Andel Arena, which is a great venue. I actually worked out there in the Grand Rapids area when I got, when I was doing my internship in package engineering. And so my first real concert as kind of an adult, I guess you would say, was at the Van Andel Arena, which I know I've told you about it before. It's kind of not embarrassing. It's just different. It was Goo Goo Dolls, Sugar Ray, and Fastball, and hey, I stand by that as my solid first concert as a grown-up, kind of at least as someone who could drive myself because it was a great show. But anyway, so I was very happy that I would get to finally see Anthrax live after many years of wanting to see them and after interviewing some of the different band members. So they were opening up for Slayer. And I just remember there was so much energy and force on stage and their music just sucked me in. It was so great and just so solid. The band was so tight. It was a wall of sound and it was so amazing. And it made me want to see an Anthrax live headlining show because their set was a bit short just because they were opening for Slayer on the Big Farewell Tour. But I was blown away. And ever since then, I just have really loved Anthrax. And I cannot wait to hopefully, God willing, see them live in concert again. Hopefully, sometime soon. Charlie from Anthrax, their drummer, is an amazing drummer. I mean, he's a really big part of the sound. And he's a really creative guy. I mean, he's an artist. He's in all kinds of different things. And very cool. He actually has a record on the way, which he says it's not a solo album. It's a record of his favorite tracks done with a bunch of his friends during the COVID lockdown and the COVID kind of pandemic lockdown period where musicians were just in their homes way more than they've ever been because they could not tour or even hang out with their bandmates. The new record is called Silver Linings, and it features a bunch of really cool cover tracks, which a lot of these I was like, wow, I cannot believe that Charlie from Anthrax covered this track because it's not what you would think. It's not just all metal songs, which I think is what makes it really cool because it's just a broad range of different artists. I mean, I'll read you a few of them. He covered Fleetwood Mac. Mother Love Bone, which, wow, I mean, I'm a big Mother Love Bone fan and I'm just very, as you know, if you rock out with me here on the podcast, on the show, you know that I'm very fascinated by that period in music history of kind of that transition from 80s hard rock and heavy metal to 90s Seattle music, Seattle sound, grunge music, whatever you want to call it. But Mother Love Bone to me had both elements because Andy was kind of that 80s hair metal kind of vocalist guy and then the music was more grungy so in my opinion Mother Love Bone was kind of the band that bridged that transition or that gap along with maybe Alice in Chains who I also felt like had some elements of hair metal in their music. Mother Love Bone in there he covered U2 which I'm a huge U2 fan my favorite concert of all time, and I've been to hundreds at this point, was U2, their 360 tour. Not sure if I told you that story. I will save that for a different show, but let's just say I did not even really want to go to that show, and I walked away being the biggest U2 fan because it was that good. Very cool that Charlie covered U2 and Mother Love Bone. I never would have guessed it. The Beastie Boys in here, Living Color and Iron Maiden. So he does have a bit of metal on there. And just a really great range of different artists. And he, of course, works with different musicians and artists on the album. So it's not just him. He's got John 5 in here. He's got some of the members of Anthrax and just a really cool range of different people. If you haven't guessed it, Charlie is our guest, which is 
very great. I have interviewed him once before, but it was quite a few years ago at this point. So it'll be great to reconnect with Charlie. We're going to talk about silver linings. We're going to talk about what else is going on in the world of anthrax and what else is just going on with his life. Actually, his girlfriend is Carla from Butcher Babies, and I think they are the cutest couple. So I have to ask about that. They're just a really cute rock star kind of couple, and I dig it. Once again, it's Ann Erickson. You're on Audio Inc. Radio, and if you don't subscribe to the podcast yet, why not? I'm very mad at you. I want you to do it right now, and that'll make me happy. It'll make me smile. Just put a big smile on my face. Just search Ann Erickson or search Audio Inc. Radio wherever you rock out to podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll be instantly notified of the next amazing show. You can also link up with me online. I would love to hear from you if you have an idea for a guest or if you just want to say, hey, you can find me on Facebook. Just search Ann Erickson on Facebook and I believe my like page should pop up. Also head to itsmean.com. That's I-T-S-M-E-A-N-N-E.com. Itsmean.com to link up on my personal Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat at Ann Erickson, Instagram, and TikTok at Erickson Ann. And you can also email me direct if you're not into social media and stuff like that. I totally get it. Just email me, Anne, at audioinkradio.com. And in the subject head, put something about how you heard me on the podcast and want to chat. That's the best way to get in touch. Just social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email me direct. It is that easy. And one last thing, check out my band, Upon Wings, at uponwings.com. We just recently released a new track, Eternal Way, featuring Ralph Sheepers from Primal Fear and Gamma Ray. He did a great job, and you can check out the official music video at UponWings.com. Like us on there on Facebook and Twitter, Spotify, all that stuff. UponWings.com. All right, let's do it. Without further ado, let's get into it with Charlie from Anthrax. Hey, everybody, this is Charlie from Anthrax, and you are listening to Audio Inc. with the one and only Anne. So first of all, how have you been doing over the past year, which has, you know, just been totally crazy? You know, for me, I was, I was staying busy, basically, and trying to focus my attention and my, you know, creativity on things that I find exciting and, and, uh, you know, not dwell on the darkness that was surrounding, you know, a lot of the country and stuff. So I just took the time to make music, create some artwork, and try and find silver linings in, in, in this whole thing that was, that was going on. Right. And I mean, I think it's great that you actually used your time in lockdown to put out silver linings. And tell me about this idea. I mean, what a cool concept for a record, a bunch of covers with these great musicians from the world of thrash and rock and metal and beyond. So how did it all come together? It all started with one day, uh, I was just really, really, the depression was starting to catch up to me. And my uh, my girlfriend Carla said, you need to shut this off. You need to stop watching the news because it's really consuming you and I could see it's just really depressing you. So she's like, go be creative, you know, go, go, go in your studio, go play your drums, go play your guitar. And it was, it was weird because at that time I wasn't really doing that because my, my attention was focused on what was happening. And, um, we weren't getting any answers to this and there was just so much uncertainty. Like, is this thing going to last for four weeks? Is it going to be gone in a month? Is it going to be gone in two months? And then as a month passed, two months passed, you realize that, wow, this is, this is going to be, this could be the whole year, you know? And, um, and then I just set up some instruments in my art room 
And like I did when I was younger in my in my room, you know, at my parents' house and started started doing that. And I was kind of getting uh, over the, the death of Neil Peart from Rush and wanted to do something with, uh, with that in mind and called up my friend Alex Skolnick and my friend Ra from Suicidal Tendencies and asked them if they wanted to jam on this Rush song with me and um, their question was, how are we going to do it? And I, and I said, uh, I'm, I have an idea. Let's try doing it this way. And it worked. <laughs> and um, we put that out, and the response was so overwhelming that I found that other people were going through the same thing that I was going through, and this was kind of like helping them, cheering them up a bit, you know? And then it kind of got good to me, and I started doing more and more and more, and then kind of snowballed into this. Wow, I think that's a great and point. That's, uh, that's, that's how it happened. And that's the truth. It was very organic. It was very natural. It was because of what, what I was dealing with. Right. And I think that's so universal. I think that everyone was just kind of wondering what was going on and people were getting, you know, depressed and scared too. So I think that's really cool that music just helped you through it. And then you created something beautiful out of it. And, and I think, isn't that what music does to people? It kind of, um, takes them out of their funk or it takes them out of their mood and it really helps them to get up and, you know, say, you know what, I'm going to go about my life too and I'm going to do this, you know. Um, I don't know, man, there's so much ugliness in, in this country and this COVID thing that happened was just such, there's never a good time for a pandemic. Let's, let's, let's get that out in the open, but, but, it happened in such a bad time and um it, it was just terrible i'm starting to see that maybe concerts are actually coming back i'm seeing shows that are being postponed but just for a few months and so there's so much hope around that what are your thoughts on that do you think that live music on a large scale is actually on its way back i think it's on its way back um but i think we have to be we have to be careful and and approach it delicately don't think that your band is going to be out there you know it's gonna it's gonna take some time and if you overdo it well then we're going to be back to where we were maybe you know um so i really think this it needs to be organized in 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 a better way and not a free-for-all yeah i think that's a good point fingers crossed but what was your favorite track to cover or is that too hard i loved every single one of them um some gave me more obstacles than others, but um, like, for instance, the the, the Run DMC one, you know, that was put together in my head first, and then I had to then convey it <laughs> and put it physically uh, onto onto tape and onto video because. I treated that song as if I was a DJ and I was kind of hitting samples to trigger the next section of the song. So all of what you see was done on the fly right then and there. It wasn't pre-recorded that, that one. So I took, I had to prepare for that one pretty, uh, you know, it was intense. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, so that one gave me some, some obstacles. The, 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 the U2 song, was a little bit of a challenge only because of the guitar parts. They were, um, they were played, um, together, but they were also, they were delayed in like this ping pong way. And if the track goes off, then the guitar is not syncing up with the track. So that was a little difficult. But once I, I learned how to do it is, you know, it came, it, it just fell into place. Uh, and then the Massive Attack song was another one that was a little difficult because I never made a song like that before. So there was multi-layers going on and different types of instruments that created this kind of atmosphere, you know? And then I really pushed Carla to, to sing that one and it was totally out of her element. It all came out great, though. Were there any 
tracks that you kind of at first thought, oh, I would never really cover that. It's just not my wheelhouse or not my thing. And then, you know, you ended up doing it. Uh, yeah, the, um, the Massive Attack song and the uh, Mother Love Bone song. I could pull off the beginning of it, but then the second part, um, Crown of Thorns, I never, I don't know, man. I had to teach myself how to play piano for that song, um, which was another thing that's just, I I could play piano, but I, I really can't play piano well. Uh, you know, I could do like these little finger notes and maybe some chord structure on my left hand, but it's, it's really difficult. It doesn't come natural to me, like drums and guitar come uh, come you know, like naturally that piano is tough i agree i've tried to play too and i play bass and so i've tried piano i'm like whoa <laughs> it's tough it's, it's hard it's hard yeah totally so um is there any do you have any plans for maybe doing a follow-up to this um i'm already three or four songs into some you know into another one um and of course the rush songs were left off um they are going to be on an EP uh, for November Record Store Day. So that's a whole separate thing. Cool, but it sounds like maybe a follow-up is one day might come out. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I necessarily see it stopping because people are back out on the road. As a matter of fact, it may be a little easier for me to do it uh, if I'm on tour with other people and I could, you know, hey, could you come on the back of the bus and sing this part? <laughs> or could you play this part, you know? Um, I don't know. I- I'm not going to rule it out. Uh, I'm still going to have fun because the one thing that um, that this did for me was it taught me how to, A, play other instruments, um, how to mix songs and how to, um, get the tones and just different things like that. You know, with Anthrax, we have a certain sound and we kind of, we experiment, but we don't go, we don't experiment that much that it doesn't sound like us, you know? But with this, I was doing so many different forms of music that I had to really apply myself in the way that these guys were apply- like, okay, so it's a Fleetwood Mac song. Okay, so I don't want to use the drum sounds from my own record because it wouldn't sound right. So I would go and find drum sounds or sample certain sounds that sounded like that and then, you know, put them in. And that's how I did it. It was, it, the hunt to me was so much a part of it, finding how it sounds and making sure the textures and everything was just right and... I don't know, man. I just, like I said, I had fun with it. Yeah, I think that something people appreciate too from this record is that people think of you as a drummer, of course, but you do so much on here, and it's just really cool to hear you in a totally different element. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And um, I love your track with Carla, and I think it's cool how she kind of, you mentioned the story about how she kind of in the beginning said, hey, you should you know try to do something. Don't just sit around watching TV being depressed. And I think you guys are so cute, too. You guys are like the perfect rock star couple. So I was wondering, how did you meet? Um, actually, we met at, uh, well, she says we met earlier, but I don't remember it. She says she interviewed me at a uh, Golden Gods Awards, but I, I, I don't remember it. But she does have a picture of it, so I know <laughs> I was there. Um, but, and then we played a festival in San Bernardino together. I think it was, it could have been a knot fest. And then afterwards, our manager said, oh, the, the, the Butcher Babies, they covered uh, one of your songs for this blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then that's how I ended up meeting her uh, at that at that show. And we were both kind of interested in the same type of things, like goofy, nerdy shit and... Uh, uh, but at the time, we were both kind of involved in marriages and stuff, and that was it. We just kind of, we would, you know, email here and there, hey, did you check out this book, or did you see that? And then 
and then that was it. I didn't talk to her for, for a bit. And then one day it just kind of, I was in LA and making a record and I hit her up. I said, you want to meet her around here, go get a coffee or something. And she turned me down. And then, um, and then I hit her back up a little bit later and she's like, okay, I got to go to the art store in that area. Do you want to come with me? And we ended up going to like an art store and, and that was it. Wow, that is so cool. Do you think that being with someone in the business helps, like in a relationship when you're in a band like Anthrax or Butcher Babies? I don't know what it helps, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, be- because of you know the, the the COVID thing. We got to spend every single day and moment together, and then once we go back on tour, um, it it may be a little difficult because of the schedules and stuff like that. So. Um, that part may be the unnatural part, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I guess when we do see each other, it will be, it'll be, you know, really good. So it's also really awesome that you have this graphic novel on the way with Anthrax. So kind of tell me about what it's been like kind of putting together the graphic novel in honor of Among the Living. And did you ever expect that record to become a graphic novel? I never expected it. As, as a matter of fact, the idea I had for the comic was nothing like this. It was a totally different um, uh, topic and uh, and look and feel and everything. And then uh, Josh Bernstein, who runs Z2 Comics, approached us about doing this. And I was like, wow, that's a that's a good idea. I mean, that's that's taken that's a, an angle that I never thought of. And um, and we just had a, a wish list of here's what we want it to be. And we got most of the things that we wanted on the, on the wish list. And people were excited about it. The writers that we got were people that we respected. Everyone from, you know, Rob Zombie to Gerard Way and Mikey Way and Corey Taylor, Brian Pose and Joe Trollman. I mean, these people who are kind of friends with us, but they also have um, this talent. And, um, and then a group of artists that were just amazing. And the, the thing I loved was I got a chance to do one of the pieces for the book too, the cover of the I Am The Law, uh, which I'm so happy about. So Scott ended up writing that story and I ended up doing the, the cover. So would you say that you and Scott and the guys were very hands-on with the graphic novel? Oh, 100%. And you also have a coffee line, I know. So I'm wondering, is there anything new with that? The coffee line is still going, and um, I wanted to do another blend, and I'm still thinking about it, but uh, I have so much stuff going on right now that I want to wait until I kind of put more attention to it and then do it, you know? But it's still people can go there and buy the coffee and stuff? Yeah, it's on my website. I I wish I could get into stores. I'm still still pushing for that i see every other dip has their coffee somewhere <laughs> there is a lot of there are a lot of metal acts out there who have their own coffee lines why do you think that is right. that metal and coffee go together the, so well who was the first and who was the first <laughs> you you were the first <laughs> but yeah everybody wants to have you know something that they feel is oh this is going to generate a ton of sales and let me tell you that's not going to work <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's more of a passion project, probably. That's exactly what it is. It's a labor of love. Back to the graphic novel. Is that going to be out this month? Or, yeah, is that this month that it's out? I see that pre-orders are available right now. I, I, pre-orders have been going on for the last couple of months. I still, excuse me for saying this, but I feel very stupid because I still don't <laughs> know when it's coming out. Then it's not just me because I could not find it to save my life. So, like, the date it's supposed to be out. Yeah, I, I don't know when it's coming out. So, um, When it does finally come out, what are you most excited about for Anthrax fans when they get to actually see and read through and enjoy the graphic novel? I think Anthrax fans are going to love this because I know I loved it when I, I, I mean, I saw the whole thing, and it's just, it's so awesome that I, I, I still can't believe that this is going to be coming out and it should it's such a great compliment to the record similarly on silver linings what are you most excited about for your fans to you know finally when they get this record and when they get to enjoy it what are you most excited for uh, i think 
I'm more excited that it's it's something that like people wanted. I was never going to put this out. It was just going to be what it was. And I just kept getting, you know, people writing, 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 posting, and then I'm like, okay, uh, I'll put it out. Um, but it's not coming out on a CD. It's just going to be out on vinyl, um, colored vinyl, and just a download. Um, and that's it. So I'm just pretty happy that people liked when I was doing it, and I know collective, a whole record of these things collectively, is it's just... It's great when you just listen to it in, in its entirety because it's like it runs the gamut of fucking a U2 song, a Massive Attack song, an Iron Maiden song, a Fleetwood Mac song. It's just like it's all over the place. Um, but it's not a solo record. It's just uh, me and some great friends who lent their talents to it. And what's next for you and Anthrax and all your projects for the rest of the year? I'm hoping I'm going to work on a new record with with finished working on this record with the guys and I mean I'm still trying to plan something I have a bunch of songs that are really good for like a little other project but um, I really gotta get off my ass and finish it. I have to stop watching Bravo. <laughs> Bravo? What are you watching Bravo? I watch everything on Bravo. <laughs> I've never I don't think name, I've ever name, watched. Name a show. I don't think I've watched one show on Bravo. I need to start it sounds like. Oh, you're, no, no, you're, you're smart then. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got hooked over the uh, lockdown and stuff on Hallmark movies, which I never thought I would because I'm into rock and metal and stuff. So I think that's worse than Bravo. <laughs> yeah, those Hallmark movies, man, they just, I don't know. They all have this kind of yellowish glow around them. It's like, <laughs> oh, they make me feel so good. I know, I know. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd want to add? Oh, thank you. I really appreciate you doing this. Um, yeah, I think we covered it. Well, thank you again so much for your time and have a good day and everything and hope to see you on the road soon. Thank you. All right, and have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Wow, that was a fun interview. Charlie from Anthrax, thanks for being an amazing guest on my show. I have to say that I think my favorite cover, I think, because I really do dig all of the covers that Charlie does on his new record, silver linings but I think that my favorite is the mother love bone one just because it was so unexpected I mean I never in a million years would have thought that Charlie from Anthrax would cover mother love bone but he did a great job and love that one I love the U2 cover city of blinding lights and just all of them I highly recommend that you check this out silver linings out May 14th depending on when you are rocking with me. It's either out now or very soon. So I have to say, Charlie, thank you again for being on my show, kicking back, talking music, talking about just random stuff. Just a great guest. It's Ann Erickson. You're on Audio Inc. Radio. And hey, by the way, if you don't subscribe to the podcast yet, you know that I am not very happy with you. Just do it right now. It's free and fun, I promise. Just search Ann Erickson or search Audio Inc. Radio wherever you rack out to podcast. Hit subscribe and you will be notified on your phone or whatever device you use to rack out to podcast. You'll be notified when there is a brand new show. And that's the best way to know when a new show is up because I always put it on social media as well. But if you want to be the very first to hear a new interview or a discussion, whatever we're doing, please subscribe. And not to mention, it will put a big smile on my face, which is a bonus. So thank you for all of the great support and link up with me online. I'm online right now. I would love to hear from you. Find me on Facebook. Just search Ann Erickson on Facebook and my like page should pop up. You can message me on there. And you can also link up on all of my social media at itsmeann.com. That's I-T-S-M-E-A-N-N-E.com. Itsmeann.com to link up on all of my social media, Twitter and Snapchat at Ann Erickson, Instagram and TikTok at Erickson Ann. Although I don't have any dancing videos on TikTok. I just, it's not me. I don't know what to do with it yet. I have one video up there. 
but you can check that out. And on the subject of videos, we also have a TV channel. I like to call it a TV channel. It's really a YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash audio ink radio. That's I-N-K like tattoo ink. YouTube.com slash audio ink radio to check out some video interviews that do not make it on the main podcast here because they are more visual. They're just video interviews and you can check that out there. And don't forget to check out my band Upon Wings at UponWings.com. We're a female led rock and metal band and we have some new stuff out Eternal Way featuring well sheepers of Primal Fear and Gamma Ray who is an amazing vocalist. Check that out and we've got a new music video out upon wings.com to link up and rock out to upon wings. Well, as always, it is very great to rock with you. You are the best. We'll do it again very soon. I've got some amazing guests lined up for this show and that's always a fun thing. Just some really cool guests lined up. Some of my favorite players actually. And then also we've got discussion shows where a recent one was talking about the best party anthems of all time. We also discussed the most underrated Metallica tracks of all time. Lots of fun shows like that on the way. So sit back and hang out with me. I love to hang out with you and hopefully the feeling is mutual. Hang out with me right here on Audio Inc. Radio. Until next time, be safe, God bless, and we'll rock soon. It's Audio Inc. with Anne. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Audio Inc. Radio podcast. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Get inked online at audioincradio.com. I'm Anne Erickson for the Audio Inc. Radio podcast.